All right, guys, let's make up for last week's really down mood level video with a little bit of a longer one. Hopefully, I don't know. Check the timestamp. How how long? Okay, I have been fluttering, fluttering about a bit. Um, and I thought maybe it was like about time that I discuss plot in depth. Because it seems to be like the biggest question that everyone is always asking about. Um, and I guess that makes sense. Uh, it's a pretty big thing. And I personally find it a little less intuitive than making characters, settings, and other things. So in the most basic sense, plot is things happening. And weirdly enough, it's sometimes easy to forget that. And I know a lot of my old work involved a lot of characters sitting around and waiting on events to occur and maybe chatting a bit. And like, I'm not talking about characters chatting in a productive manner that moves the plot around, kind of like Gilmore Girls style. I'm talking about pages and pages of irrelevant banter. And before I get into detail about plot, I kind of need to remind you of this, that stuff is always happening. The space between your major plot points are in motion. They may fluctuate in speed and may not be as hard hitting as major plot points, but all scenes build on each other. When you plot your plot graph, it's not going to look like a series of steps. It's going to look like a ramp. So yeah, make sure that you make sure you keep that in mind as we go into these sort of um, formulas. Let's let's talk about plot structure. I'm going to talk largely about my own methods for plotting. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a mesh between three types of plotting methods. So there's seven point, three act, and the Hollywood formula, which is where I get my basis for my kind of plot graphs. These three structures have basically informed all of my stories. Yeah. So first and foremost, you should kind of be familiar with three the three basic parts that make up a story. There's the beginning, the middle, and the end. Typically, the beginning and end take up half of the story, and the middle takes up the other half. Uh, ratios may vary from story to story, but this is typically the case. These three sections are acts. Act one is the beginning. It includes the introduction and the inciting incident. Act two is where the middle begins. It begins sort of after the inciting incident and continues with rising action, a midpoint, some more rising action. And then finally, the final act, act three, the end, uh, this includes the climax and the resolution. So that's an overview of the structure, but there's a few more elephant <laughs> elephants. There's a few more elements that need clarification before we dig in any further and get in depth with all of these. So these plot elements are in most stories and, and there's three the, there's these three characters and they especially show up in larger stories. So there's your protagonist, your antagonist, and your relationship character. So your protagonist hard to find stories without these. Um, your protagonist is a character that wants something concre concrete. This is their goal and it should be something very specific and very obtainable. So instead of saying the protagonist wants love, your protagonist should instead want something more specific, like your protagonist wants to get married. Um, instead of your character wants adventure, your character should want to scale a mountain or find a hidden treasure. So that's your protagonist. The antagonist is then the character that gets in the way of that goal. This is where you'll kind of see that antagonists don't necessarily have to be villains. So for the protagonist that wants to get married, their sick family member that is always taking up their time and preventing them from giving themselves self-care is an antagonist in that sense. And for our protagonist that wants to climb a mountain, our antagonist could be a very well-meaning park ranger that thinks this is really dangerous and does not want them to do that at all. Stop it, you. Okay? So yeah, and likewise, we're, we're going to move into our final important character to understand. It's the relationship character. This character is related to the need of the protagonist instead of the want. Um, as a refresher, uh, the need is what the protagonist requires to achieve what they want. Okay? Um, the need is something that the protagonist resists. The relationship character's role in the story is to advocate 
for this need. Early in the story, the relationship character will express this need to the main character, like, hey, chill out, and the main character is going to reject that, like, no, I don't have to chill out. And then later on in the story, the relationship character and the protagonist will reconcile. So the protagonist will be like, yeah, I really should have chilled out. And relationship character will be like, yeah, you should have. That's basically it. Um, The relationship character isn't necessarily a romantic character, despite what that term will make some people think. The relationship ship character can be that, but they are often a friend or a mentor. For the marriage-wanting protagonist, maybe this relationship character is the love interest, and the love interest then expresses to the protagonist that they need to not be so sac- self-sacrificing, that it's hurting them, and the main character rejects that. Meanwhile, our mountain climber protagonist might have a friend that pushes them to trust in their instinct, and the plot ensues from there, okay? So with all of those in mind, let's finally move into actually how to structure a plot. So let's talk about this really in depth here. So when I'm approaching a plot, I always kind of begin backwards. I usually end up redoing the end eventually, and you'll kind of see this take place in the example that I've written out for all of us. But yeah, I usually end up redoing the the ending and making it like 100% more applicable and awesome and cool. But like, nonetheless, let's continue on here. Let's not ramble. Um, so I start the story at the end because the end informs the beginning of the story. And knowing what it's building up to helps um, helps me know what I need to set up, and it is inherently full of conflict, which makes me less likely to make a story where nothing happens, because if I'm building to something, stuff is going to happen regardless. The final act of a story is made up of two sections. There's the climax and the resolution. The climax of the story is what occurs when every single thing has clicked into place for the protagonist. Um, The most important part is that they have finally come to understand what they need and they are putting it into action. With this, they are able to overcome the antagonist and get their dreams. What follows is the resolution, the getting their dreams part. With the resolution, the um, protagonist obtains what they want and they reconcile with the relationship character and other loose ends are all tied up at this point. When I brainstorm a story, I like to think of what really cool ending bits I want to happen. I try to think out these like final conflicts first because, you know, like I was saying, it helps make a story that is inherently based in conflict, and conflict is interesting. So when you realize what your character needs to win this conflict, that will help you inform the kind of story that you're telling. The resolution you decide will help inform what your character wants, what their goal is, and what they're trying to achieve. Um, So after I have a solid ending, I can start on Act 1 and begin shaping the introduction. So the introduction is where you show the state of your protagonist before the change happens. Let's say our ending involves an epic showdown with a dragon, in which the character cleverly outwits said dragon. So the resolution then follows with the protagonist claiming the dragon's gold and restoring their village. The introduction would then need to be the opposite of that. So the protagonist begins the story as a character which isn't clever and brute forces their way through every problem. They also really want to steal Dragon's Gold to restore their ailing town. There may be plenty of more subplots and world building things to introduce, but those are the main plot elements that need introduction. Ailing town, protagonist that is bullheaded and not so clever. So let's leave act one for a bit and hop over to Act 2. The midpoint is the third plot element I approach before looking at the transitionary points to and from Act 2. The midpoint, in a way, divides the second act into two parts. Um, This plot event occurs in the exact middle of the story, usually. You can wiggle it a bit, it's fine. It represents a shift in storytelling. Before this point, your story raises questions. And after that, it begins answering them. It moves from a more passive form of storytelling to an active form with the protagonist. So yeah, the midpoint is where the protagonist shifts into action. 
um, and they can see the full breadth of the problem and they now want to fix it. Often the midpoint is like a huge revelation, doesn't have to be, but either way the midpoint typically reveals the answer to the conflict, but the hero doesn't have the skills or the mindset or all of the answers needed to put it all together. In the case of our dragon fighting protagonist, the midpoint of their story might be that the village is further destroyed after a brazen attempt to defeat the dragon. The hero ends up getting the village destroyed, so the protagonist no longer is bolstered by the admiration of the town and they must acquire a new perspective. It forces them into action and to be different than they were before. Um, midpoints are really tricky. In the past, I found that I had a tendency to underwrite them. I ended up remedying that by turning initial like climax drafts into midpoints and then ended up like thinking up cooler things to happen at the ends. But aside from doing that, just remind yourself that above all else, midpoints stir the pot. Um, they stir the plot. Okay, it, it's okay to make exciting things happen, basically. All right, so now that we've got our beginning, middle, and end, let's fill in all of the blanks. So first, there's the inciting incident, which is also called the call to action. For me, I kind of use the term inciting incident as a shorthand for three smaller events. So there's the call to action, the refusal of the call, and the acceptance of the call. So I just lump those all in together and call them the inciting incident. I know this isn't technically correct, but it's just my shorthand, so la di da right? So yeah, so these three things, they go hand in hand in hand. Um, the call to action is an event at the beginning of the story that shakes up the status quo. Uh, in the case of our plot, it begins with our brazen protagonist in their rundown village, and the air is polluted by dragon smoke, there's riches taken, livestock killed. The call to action then occurs when a stranger comes to town speaking of a way to defeat the dragon and reap its gold. This is quickly followed by the refusal of the call. Uh, the notion is too outrageous to be believed by our protagonist. However, when more pressure is applied through the death of the protagonist's mother due to the living conditions that the dragons have cre the dragon has created, the protagonist is forced to accept the call. So all that is the inciting incident. So like our protagonist meets with the stranger after that and is ready to move on to act two. But but we're not. We're not going back to act two. We're going to move right on ahead to act three because there's stuff we need to sort out there too. So when we left act three, we're, we were kind of vague. And now it's the time where I would shape our climax even more. In the climax, like the early stages of the climax, we need two things. We need a low point and then we need our revelation. So the low point is based is exactly how it's described. It's the lowest point in the story. It is the absolute defeat of our protagonist. It's the harshest, saddest thing we can put them through. So we need to think of something that's even worse than our midpoint at this point. Um, so our dragon, our dragon fighter has decided to challenge the dragon once again, but this time the stakes are bigger. We'll define that a bit later. Um, and for our low point, the protagonist tries to be smarter this time. They set everything up and the dragon still manages to defeat the protagonist. So they tried so hard and in the end, it didn't even matter, guys. It didn't even matter. Um, and they got so far. Forgot that part. In the lowest point, the protagonist then reflects and finally realizes what the traveler was telling them all this time. They need to slow down and think. Using information gained through the midpoint and beyond, the protagonist is finally able to see things they were missing. And, and then the climaxy bits that we already wrote ensue from there. Since we already had a lot of stuff, a lot of groundwork there, that was kind of easy to sort out. Uh, the last parts we're missing after this are huge sections of plot. And they're some of the most difficult for me to plot out. And they're also some of the most fun things to write out. And I probably will make a whole video on these ones. Um, but they're the bridges between the mid the midpoint in Act 1 and the midpoint and Act 3. It's the whole middle of the story. These parts of the story are known as rising action. Um, 
in these patches, our protagonist will fail a lot. Um, stakes will get raised, things get worse, action is added. You can look at my little video on the, the lace quotient, I will link it up above, but I go a little more into rising action and I'd like to do another video about rising action because it is very difficult to get a grasp on and kind of hard to explain and hard to add to a major plot graph. So just don't forget about it, okay? So I'm going to run through the plot that I've been making here and sort of show you what it looks like when you add on the rising action and when we take into consideration all that we've kind of written down already. Um, all right, so our protagonist lives in a rundown town under the oppressive claw of a drag. Food and wealth are scarce, and the protagonist's remaining family is ill from the smoke that fills the air. Who? Um, one day, a traveler comes to town. They remark that they have a way to kill the dragon. Uh, the protagonist brushes this off as ludicrous and returns to their daily what's-its. But things get worse, as their mother eventually passes away from her illness. Um, this is kind of the last straw for the protagonist, and the protagonist ends up chasing down the Traveler, demanding that they help kill the dragon. The Traveler agrees reluctantly, worrying that the protagonist might not be thinking things through. They begin towards the dragon's mountain. The protagonist continually messes up tasks like hunting due to impatience. They nearly get everyone killed because of their brazenness. And while they manage to survive through these and not really learn much, their travel is made worse by these continued mistakes regardless. The protagonist rushes past clues that would help them defeat the dragon, much to the chagrin of the traveler. When they finally make it to the dragon's lair, the protagonist begins to realize that they may be a little bit ill-equipped. However, they say screw it and they go on to fight the dragon without knowing anything and doing the same thing that they always do. Without a worry, protagonist jumps into battle with the dragon, demanding that they give up their whole dragon-y thing and any strength that the protagonist thought that they had is quashed in an instant by this dragon. As the protagonist struggles to stay alive, they kind of realize that this was a terrible idea. Uh, they hide away in defeat and the dragon just continues on. It leaves the nest, setting a fire across the land, decimating the village and anything else in its path. Uh, the hero returns, utterly defeated. As they return to their village, they are rejected by the village because of what has happened and how it's all their fault. At a loss of what to do, the protagonist decides to continue on and kind of think things out a bit more here. And they decide to undo what they've caused. The protagonist follows the dragon's path of destruction, learning slowly about its weaknesses. Uh, it becomes clear that the dragon's plan is to strong arm the entire kingdom, unimpressed by its fights with humankind thus far. Our protagonist then decides to cut the dragon off at the pass with a clever trap. All appears to be going well, but things, they don't go well, okay? Uh, the trap fails once again, the hero is defeated, this time even greater and worse than before. The dragon takes over the entire kingdom, beginning to fill everything with all the deadly smoke, but waking up amongst the rubble, our protagonist finally begins to put everything together, using some sort of like clever method based on all the knowledge that they've attained, the dragon is defeated by surprise. The dragon completely overlooked what the hero was doing. Once the dragon is defeated, the protagonist thanks the traveler for, for helping them realize what should have been obvious. The, they high five or something, and all the wealth is returned from the dragon, and they rebuild the kingdom. <sighs> okay, and that's it. That is a plot. We did it, guys. Um, that's my entire process. That's how we got from absolutely nothing to a plot. It's pretty basic, and there's lots of stuff that needs to be filled in, a lot of spaces with a lot more like depth and interest and subplots and character bits and motivations. But that's how you structure something that will really like take you, take you places. And I know you guys wanted that, and I know it's really difficult to do that. So, um, if you guys, okay, since you guys made it this far, if you guys would be interested 
at all in like us reviewing some of these things like um as in you sending stuff in and getting reviews for like different like exercises like say I was to give you a prompt for like a beginning of a story and you then designed the end of a story based on that like would you be interested in having me look things over and give you ideas at all or kind of like show you like where you might be having troubles at all I don't know if you actually would be interested in that, I've been thinking about doing something like that. But I need like interest in it first because I don't want to I don't want to spend too much time on making this stuff if there's not a dream of having it. If you want me to review your full stories, however, I'm not sure I want to do that right now at this time, okay? As much as I love you guys. Um but if you'd be interested in doing like little writing exercises and very structured ones and have us have a little look see little art things too. Yeah, leave leave a comment below saying that you'd like it. Sorry I was so out of it last week. Um, I don't know. It was a very long week. Yeah, thanks so much for watching, y'all. It was bounds of fun. <laughs> also, tell me if this helped. If it helped you, give, give me a little high five. Tell me I'm doing good. Yeah, I, I, I want, I want something. I don't know what. <laughs> I need water. Okay.